Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to the new subscribers. Thank you for stopping in. Sure do pre... That bug went right almost in my mouth. You see that? <laughs> Thank you for stopping in. Bug in my mouth or not. Um, this video here, I'm back on that little bitty 7.5 QT. Um, I took apart the, uh, throttle handle with the helix and the slide and all that and that cable I tried the cable lubricator and it didn't seem to do much so uh, we're going to get back on that little 7.5 and get us a throttle that works I can't remember what else I needed to do to it but uh, we sure are going to get back on it and get it done whatever it is um, beautiful day out here and so we're gonna get back on that little beauty and get it wrapped up squared away I got a bunch of other stuff going on I got my little Suzuki four stroke I want to get it buttoned up the plastic back on the bonnet back on some oil in the block maybe give it a test run I got another one or two I want to give a test run just because they've been sitting out here on my rack for over two years and it's time to uh wake them puppies up so that's what we got going but remember you never know what's going to show up at this little shop so let's get going on this little 7.5 johnny and see what else we get into might take a little boat tour who knows who knows let's go okay now i want to perk something out here now, as I'm going through these and I'm taking care of this cable, look at that coil bolt right there. See how bad that is, corroded and rusted? This one was the same way. There it is. Now, if you look over here at this one, I can do this. You can see how nice that is. But this one, this one, and this one look like that. When you're going through one of these old kickers and you see stuff like that, get it out of there. Get it out of there. It don't belong in there. And it's all rounded off. You can try a metric socket, but I like these needle nose them vice grips right here. Get a hold to it. I've already popped this one, but you can see you can get it like that once you get it good and loose and then you can just pull it out of there okay and i've got the uh tiller arm unbolted so we can get this old stiff cable out of there and everything so that's where we're going right now that's where we're going get all that out of the tiller arm and i'll go out to my pile and get me a good cable and put it in there and i might have to take off the flywheel not sure yet Okay, I got my little puller set up here. And uh, let's make sure she's snug. Yep. Let's see what size that thing is. I think that's it. I think it's a one. Yeah. Let me get Thor in here. There she popped. There she pops. Did I heard her? She popped it like a teenage pimple. Come here, you. I heard you. Come on. Yeah. There. Now I can unscrew the, the pull her. Yeah. Things seem a little sticky even after I unhooked the uh, st 
sticky throttle cable, which, you know, you know, you know, that needed to come off. And, you know, I'm not one to bang on the end of my crankshaft. I don't like to bang on the end of the crankshaft. You do. Well, if you like to bang on the end of your crankshaft, bang away. But I have seen a number of fine outboards come in here. And that old flywheel be all kitty whoop it Somebody went to banging on that flywheel, or excuse me, oh yeah, on that flywheel nut, or on the end of the flywheel. And they boogered up the threads, maybe flattened out the end, disfigured the end of that little crank. Uh-oh. Got a little bit of it. Now see, that's where it was laying down on its back or something and all that moisture puddled in there and we got that rust in there. We clean that up. We clean that up. That ain't no my thing. <laughs> but yeah, this thing, where's my key? Where's my key? Oh, there's my little key. She's all in there good. See all this rust? I don't know if you can see that. You see all that rust right there on the end of that crank? That's what had that crank on there good and tight. That's why I don't like to be banging on them. Especially these little salties. And you remember what this one looked like when it came in. Ooh. But yeah, she's stiff under here, so I'm going to take this. It's not real bad, but it, it still should be looser than that, I do believe. So I'm going to clean this up. A little brake clean or something and see if I can't work some lube down in there without pulling everything off. So let me get some stuff. I'll be back. It helped a lot. A little bit of brake clean. We're going to let that soak for just a minute. Same thing with this whole flywheel. Get that out of there. Clean up the magnets. Clean up the magnets. Get some little compressionist air. Just like we did that. We do the flywheel. Yeah. There's a compressionist air in there. Then, din 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 din. Put a little tri flow. Just a little, right in there. Now, 
Now this thing was pretty stiff, but now with just the uh, the thing that this is what the cable would be hooked to, two fingers. So there we go. We got. She's loosening up real good. And I'm working my cam here real good. Everything good. Everything good. So as soon as I get a new throttle, that should be much, much. Muchos betres. Okay, you remember the bonnet. She had some loose. What I like to do is take some of this contact cement and put it on the actual bonnet itself and on the foam. Don't have to be a lot. Just wipe some on there. And then let that set up for Oh, a couple minutes, a few minutes. Look, there's still crud under there. But it'll be glued down. There's a little there. Yeah, just put it on the foam and on the hood. Glue that down with the contact cement. And then what I'll do is squirt some paint. The color to be determined by my choice. So, yeah. Oh, there's some more. <laughs> Where's my brush? Where's my brush? There's some more. Okay. All right. I'll push all that down in a minute. I just want it to kind of dry a little bit with the contact cements. Then we'll squirt some paint. I'll be back. This is just some old rattle can that I needed to use up anyway. And this will make a perfect glue. In addition to the contact cement so none of this foam goes sucking up in my cob of rapa. So. Now everything will be glued down and pretty. It'll be pretty. This is just about uncalled for. Look at how white powdery that is. There was no primer put on this, at least this section, this part. Nothing under that paint but aluminum. That be for show. Get my little wire brush to it once I get all the flaky, flaky achy off there. Then that's where the shift handle goes, right there. You can see that bolt's broke off, but that's where the shift handle goes. So I have to drill me some pilot holes on the side, get some lube in there and some heat and while not unhook these wires and such and get that out of there, drill that out of there. Good boy. And this is the little Suzuki four stroke. The whole lower unit was just like that handle, just white, no primer. It uh, really is kind of sad. I've seen it on OMCs too. This is the first time I've ever seen it on a Suzuki, but there was no paint, literally no, excuse me, no primer under that paint. And it shows.
Yeah, I'm all the way through. I got three holes. Now we'll try and get that one out of there. Let me see if I can do some stuff. Get that bolt. Okay, what I'm doing is I took Diablo and I'm cutting right around here. There was a little like, part that stuck out about, well, at least an eighth of an inch. And I'm cutting around that and that'll give me something to grab on hopefully to that bolt. Now I'm going to heat that just a little because I got these in here and then I'll take my van pliers. First I'm going to squirt some lube in there. I need to open a new can I think. You can see it coming out the other side. So I'm going to let that soak for 10 minutes or so. I'll be back. Now you saying, look, man, you getting overspray everywhere. It don't matter because this is going to get painted black. So anything that's got some primer on it right now is going to be black. And that same overspray will get all over there in black. Which is okay. Because motor is black. But, uh, yeah, I put a light coat of etching primer on there, zinc, and then a couple coats of the regular automotive primer to make it look a little smoother, and then once that dries, I'll coat it with black. I'll be back. I'll show you something that just it's kind of one of my pet peeves look at this right here make this beautiful engine and not use stainless there just really it's sad I mean so I'll have to core seal it and then paint it ridiculous Just ridiculous. So 
So I put a little bit of Coro seal on there. Do it out here. Right? Spill me. There. Yeah, just stuff like this. It just should not happen. Well, there it is. A little 7.5. She's a cutie. She's the cutie. This engine had the kill switch out here on the throttle. I don't like those because you accidentally hit it a lot of times and kill the engine. So I put this cap here. I'll tell you where I got that. What I did was drill the hole and put the kill switch here. I like that a little bit better. It's out of the way. Runs really sweet. Now, I don't know what that thing is I put in the end, but I can tell you where to get them. I'm not sure what they're used for. Um, but, like I said, I put the kill switch right here. And it's just a little kill switch I had hanging around. And these, I don't know what they, they call them, but where you get them is at, the, uh, at your local hardware store where they sell like dresser drawer knobs and stuff like that. Handles and knobs for cabinets and dresser drawers and stuff. Um, they'll generally have those. They come in several different sizes and a couple different colors. I know they had them in white and black. And uh, they just happen to pop right into the, uh, to the ends of those uh, throttle grips there. And uh, I put a little contact cement and then I just tap them in there with a little rubber mallet and they fit real nice. Um, I've never been a real big fan of that kill switch that sticks way out on the end of the tiller like that. You accidentally bump into it and kill it. And then they tend to break easy too. Um, 
And I think that's why OMC finally moved them over here to the side. Because it's not real good having that thing sticking way out here. And if also the lanyard dangling down there. Uh, but she came out really pretty. And it's funny, when the guy brought this to me and uh, dumped it out here, he said, yeah, it's dead. Uh, you might be able to get some parts off of it. <laughs> Wrong. It's a cutie. And it's a runner. So now, I got a little cosmetic work to do on the lower unit. A little paint and prime in there. But that's going to be quite easy to do. So, and I'll show you um, some of the other stuff I did uh, on the inside, how I ran the wiring and so forth. I'll be back. Okay, you can see on the little Johnson here, I replaced all those rusty bolts, cleaned up my grounds real good with a, a little small wire brush. Then I ran the kill switch from over there, and uh, for the ground to it, I hooked right there. There's already a ground strap there. And I just backed out that 3 8 inch bolt right there and put another eye on my wire and put there. The other one hooks into the quick disconnect. Now, on the uh, throttle cable, I used a different throttle cable, so I had to come up with this system, um, which I took the, the one of these type, type of ends off of a uh, piece of linkage that I had around here that was threaded the same as this cable. The other one was a finer thread. Then I just put a spacer and my lock nut and a bolt in there and that works fine. And the throttle works real good now. It, it's real easy after cleaning up under the flywheel and everything. She's real loose. The coils are all nice and clean. The carby's all nice and clean. Um, went through her pretty good, so she's a good little kicker now. But yeah, get all them old rusty bolts and stuff that you see in there. Just get them out of there. But this one, uh, I got some painting and stuff to do on that lower unit. I got to wire wheel it and then a couple coats of primer. and Then I'm going to change the lower unit oil. But... Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. And, uh, she's a cutie. Okay, I wanted to show you what I'm coming up with for this Suzuki shifter. Um, I tried to drill this broke off bolt out here and I didn't get it out. Well, I got it out, but I had to drill um, a bigger hole is what it amounted to. So what I came up with is, is I got this little bracket here. I put it in. It was just a piece of flat steel. I put it in my vise and bent it at a 90 right here. Um, then I drilled two holes, one in each end. I put a nut. This is the part the shift cable I had. All I had was this threaded part and the shift cable. So I put a nut back here and a washer. Then I put a nylock up here. Here's where it screws into the shift handle is right here. Then I took a long bolt and put in the shift handle. And you can see that handle pivots that way and that way. So then, after I put a bolt and a washer through the shift handle, I drilled a hole all the way through. And before I put that on, I'm going to put a shim. Nice little thin shim there. Okay. Then a washer and a nylock. Now, I don't know what was here before because this thing came in pretty much as you see it. But the gist of it, I, I thought, is that it needs to be able to swivel a little bit this way and a little bit the other way. So 
that's kind of what I was shooting for. Okay. little 7.5 cutie purrs like a little bitty kick kick kitty um I got that Suzuki four stroker all taken care of looking pretty good I got that little 7.5 all squared away um I did want to mention I had some comments on people saying that uh, man I can't believe you shot water right up into them cylinders like that what's wrong with you doofus you don't be squirting water up in your cylinders well seems to run pretty nice it do now you look back a video or two ago at the condition that little motor came in when it came in here. I just want to say on that little two-stroker there, water is not your enemy. In my area everything we get here is salt run, salt corroded. You think about that Suzuki 4 stroker, the paint was missing all from the lower leg on that thing where salt got in up under that paint and just ate the paint right away, ate it completely off the tiller transom bracket. Apparently it got all up into that shift handle until it snapped. Um, fresh water is not going to hurt your motor. Um, this little 7.5 was just encrusted, seized up, encrusted with salt and uh, hard to get apart. Um, when I took the carburetor off, opened it up, white powder, salt just came out. Well, I put it in my ultrasonic cleaner, which is soap and water. Soap and water is not your enemy. Um, I have taken engines that come in here that are that bad when this one showed up. I pull the whole power head, throw the whole thing right in my outboard tank. Just kabloosh! And let it sit in there for overnight, a day, whatever. Um, 
then of course you're going to bring it out after a good scrubbing and a good bath and you're going to air blow dry it with compressed air and then you're going to get your other friends stuff like this stuff like this you're going to take it soap lubricants and fresh water are not the enemy salt is the enemy at least that's my humble opinion I've been hosing down outboards plunging them in fresh water for a long 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 time I've never had an outboard go bad because of fresh water soap and lubricants that little outboard right there came out really nice it's a coyote but I will have to that's why I've got it in my little roll cart bucket tank there so I can start it when I'm out here moving around let it run for five minutes or so shut it down because I have been in the cylinders I have been in the inners of that motor so we want to take it a little bit easy with it um, for a good you know hour or so of running I'll bring it up to about half throttle and so forth but uh, wants to let everything get the mesh in good in there and the tank that I'm running on I have mixed 24 to 1 um, with some other little goodies in there so that, uh, like Marvel Mistro oil and stuff like that so I'll take it easy with the little 7.5 while things get to know each other inside them innards and uh, but the Suzuki four stroker and the little 7.5 Johnson are done. I ain't sure what I'm going to start on next, but I think it's going to be a mid 80s 35, I think it is, Evinrude. Um, years ago, I put electric start on it for the guy and he had it in storage for a little while and said that he couldn't get it to run or it's starting and die and start and die. So I think we're going to bring that one in here. Sounds like the old carburetor, don't it? So we're going to get that one in here probably next. And then I'm hoping to get back on that Mercury three-cylinder 50 um, and put it, convert it over to tiller handle and so forth. I think that's going to be a project coming up. And then I got a couple other little jewels that were just dropped off. A couple of little uh, Johnson and Evinrude 15s I got to get to that have cooling issues. So we got that coming up. And you never know what's going to come in this little shop. So thanks for watching. And as always, that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host.